Morning, everybody. Beautiful day out there, huh? It's Seattle. It's, that's what it's supposed to be, I've been told. Let me dump my stuff. So thank you guys for braving it today. Thank you to everybody watching online. I know this is being streamed. All the events are being streamed. I'm really psyched to be here today because it's not my usual sort of conference. I mean, I'm an image logger. I've been part of the program with Samsung for two years now. Um, use their gear all the time, love it. But this is my world. I write books. I do a lot of business speaking. I speak all the time. I've never spoken at a photography only conference. So I'm super psyched about this because it's something new for me. I'm usually talking to CMOs and people who want to figure out the business side of the house. That's my world, content marketing, leadership, motivation, that sort of stuff. But today I want to talk to you as photographers about doing more with your photography, about doing more for the social good of the world and to kind of tell my story about how I started focusing in that world and why I think it's important that you focus on that world. So April 2012, I had a moment where everything changed. I was uh, invited to go with the One Foundation, the One Campaign to Ghana. They were rolling out vaccines uh, countrywide, the first country ever to do two brand new vaccines countrywide. And I was invited to go over there to just document what I saw. They said, Cece, come with us. You know, take pictures, write about it, share everything you see, and tell people the work that we're doing in the world. I said, all right, I can do that. Now, I've never used this photo in a presentation because it's hard to see it. But we were in a hospital, and um, their specialty is malnutrition. And they, they warned us. They said, behind this door is where, they come, where the kids come in immediately. This is like triage room this yellow door, and I didn't take a picture of the door, I still kicked myself, I'm like, ah, such a core part of this story. But we opened the door, and there was several kids in there, there was mothers in there, and it was a really moving moment. And then I met Mercy, and she was the same age as my son, except she was 13 years old, but she looked like she was eight. She was so small, she was so, so malnutritioned. I mean, they had found her two weeks earlier on the floor of her hut next to her, her dead mother. It was horrible. And Mercy was holding my fingers, and she was smiling. And it was the moment I realized I couldn't be a photojournalist, because this is out of focus. It's not, you know, it's not a great shot. But she had this smile, and she had me. And I, I, and I, I went to leave, and she wouldn't let me go. She was holding on to my two fingers, and she just kept pulling. And I said, OK. I, 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 gotta, I gotta remember mercy. Um, I gotta use my powers for good. I'd done marketing for years. I've, I mean, I've worked on crazy campaigns. We've done stuff for True Blood and Coke and all this crazy stuff. But mercy made me say, I gotta use my powers for good. I gotta inspire and teach people. Today, I only have 20 minutes, so I don't have time to teach you much. So my whole goal is to inspire you. That's, that's the goal. That's what I want you to take away from this, is to be inspired to do more with your powers to do them for good, to use your photography for more than just selfies. Um, thankfully, I haven't seen many selfie sticks here. That made me feel very good about, about the Seattle <laughs> photography community. There hasn't been many of those. So technology empowers us to share immediately. And I think about this photo. Um, these are actually two different photos that I took at another hospital while I was in Ghana. Um, and I took a picture with my phone. Uh, it's amazing, you don't, you don't think that you have service out in the middle of nowhere. I always remember I had Skyped home, was talking to my kids over Skype video from Ghana, and then the next week I was in Vermont camping and I couldn't get a cell phone service. So it's one of those things, you forget the technology's out there. But I took a picture of my phone, I posted it to Instagram of this with the caption of, so every single one of these yellow folders is an AIDS patient at this hospital. There's 16,000 folders in this damp uh, basement underneath the hospital. And it was such a powerful image. I just took it and shared it because I wanted to share it with the world to see it. And, that, and I had to wait till later till I had a good service to upload. And when I think about things like now, the fact that we've got these tech, you know, you know I, I do stuff with Samsung. We've got these cameras that, you know, I take a picture and I tap my phone against it and it, all of a sudden I can bring over every photo off my camera directly to my phone and post. That's only been in two years. All of a sudden that technology is, is becoming more and more prevalent. And I love that. The fact that we can do things like that, you don't have to be tethered to your phone, you don't have to be tethered to your laptop. 
The technology's there to share stuff. To be, like, I, it still kills me because I remember this was when Instagram was still only squares. And I was like, no, I want a wide shot of this, this thing. And I only showed a little bit of it. But I got more reactions from this because it wasn't sharing just the, you know, the sick kid or the dying mother. It was, this is a powerful image, right? The fact that these folders and what they represent, it makes you kind of pause and it, it drives the fact home that I don't have to necessarily show a sick patient to make you pause and realize, oh wow, the AIDS, AIDS is a problem here. I mean, every one of these is someone who's been diagnosed with it at the hospital. Some of them survive, some of them not. So one of the other things though is everybody thinks, you know, I start with the story about Ghana, you think you have to, you know, when you talk about social change and you talk, talk about doing good in the world, you think you have to go to Ghana or go to South America or Brazil or someplace. And the fact of the matter is you can start in your own hometown, start on your street corners. There are things you can do in your own community. This is a shot I took in Fargo, one of my favorite cities in, in the country. I love Fargo, I love what they're doing there. And they've got this really vibrant community where they're working together with entrepreneurs, creatives, educators, to solve the city's problems. And there's a really big creative base there. So there's lots of photographers and there's a great illustrator and there's, oh, I think of all the people there. You can start in your own hometown to make change. There are stories out there to, that you can tell. I think, you know, last night I saw um, Devin Allen, who if you're not familiar, I know he's speaking later, do not miss him. I can't wait to hear him talk. Um, he was just documenting the streets of Baltimore, his community. Uh, and then later, all of a sudden, what happened? You know, Time said, hey, we want to put your picture on the cover to show the story of what's happening in Baltimore. And it was amazing to see, I know he was out last night, because I, I happened to see on Twitter this morning, he was walking around the streets last night of Seattle shooting photos uh, of the homeless and saying, man, we've got similar problems here that we do at home. So don't think you have to go out into the world. There are plenty of issues in the world, don't get me wrong. There are so many. If you saw the closing keynote yesterday, it was heartbreaking to see what's happening out there in the oceans and the, the Amazon. It was just, it was heartbreaking. But you can start in your own street corner. Find an issue that you're passionate about. Find something that matters to you and help them. It might be a church, it might be a cause, it might be a school, whatever it is, help them out. There are organizations that need your help and talent as photographers. And also, shine a light on those people in your community that have voices. This is why I love Devin's story, because the fact of the matter, he was just a guy in Baltimore shooting pictures. This is not Devin, by the way, I realize. This is my friend Clarence, who does a, a magazine called Bold Edition, where he kind of profiles people in the New England area doing really creative stuff. But shine a light on those people in your community, especially if you have a following or any sort of reach. You know, you're a brand, maybe you've got you know, a big online following. Shine a light on those voices that you respect and those voices that maybe aren't getting the attention they deserve. Because it's one of those things where, you know, I've been online in a long, long time. I've been, you know, social media is in my blood. It's just, it is. I'm a geek. I love being online. And anytime I can say, hey, look at this person, look what they're doing, you should be doing more of that. That helps. Showing, you know, focusing on the causes you believe in, shining a light on those, wearing them like a badge of honor. It's why my profile, my bio says things about, you know, being the original one dad and the work I do with the United Nations, because I want to shine a light on that because not enough people realize that stuff's going on. And I could put in stuff about books and speaking and all that stuff, but it doesn't matter as much to me. I want to showcase the work that matters. I want to put a light on that. And so don't forget to do this. And it's interesting because, right, everybody's now a citizen journalist, a citizen reporter. We've all got a phone in our hands. We're taking pictures. Oh, and by the way, since I have this photo up, if you go to a concert, watch the concert. Listen to the music. Stop all the damn phones at concerts. You agree? I was with you, at that you were with me at that show. <laughs> is, it, is that your hand? <laughs> um, yeah, we were at a, a Macklemore show in Vegas, and I took my phone out to take a picture just because I wanted a picture of all the phones in front of me. Um, thankfully, there was a guy, thankfully he's not in this picture. He was like right about here, this guy in a suit with his iPad above his head. And I'll never forget our friend Sugar wa walked up, tapped him on the shoulder and said, sir, that is not appropriate. Um, but please, th there's my little PSA. Don't bring your phone out at concerts, actually enjoy it. Take a picture and then put it away. But it's one of those things as photographers is that everybody is a snapshot reporter. I don't want to say journalist because just because you're on the street taking pictures doesn't make you a journalist. Journalism is a very specific skill. 
Um, and people who think they're, like I will never say I'm a journalist. I, I'm a blogger, I'm a writer, I am not a journalist. I have opinions, I put them in everything I create. But as you think about it as photographers, is realize that people are out there. They are taking pictures all the time and they're telling stories. Find those people, work with them, figure out a way to work together. But realize, that, I mean, I think we all know this is happening. Everybody's got a device in their hand and they're documenting everything. I have two teenage kids, so I know. They document everything. It's all on Snapchat. Uh, if I ever wanna know what my kids are up to and what they're getting in trouble with, that's all I need to do is look. Um, and be responsible with what you create and share. Think about, think about before you hit that publish button on a photo or anything you do, think about it. Because you have to be responsible with it. I know I put stuff out there and people react to it or they get angry about it or they like it. And you've gotta think about that. The other thing, please set a good example for the next generation. This is my daughter when she was about, I was trying to figure out how old she was. Um, and you know, that's her first camera. I put a camera in her hands, not a cell phone. I put a camera in her hand. I wanted her to appreciate taking pictures. And I think it's one of the most important things we can do is to mentor and teach the next generation about being responsible with photography, about the power of photography, about what it means. All these things, you know, I try to put into my kid's head. And now, thankfully, you know, she steals my Samsung cameras. And, and you know, she's developed in this beautiful young lady. She's 14 now. She loves photography, and I love it. My son, not so much, but she loves it. So she gets to be in the presentation. Um, even though that embarrasses her, she hates it. She hates when I put her in presentations. Um, she's kind of used to it by now. And one other thing. There is nothing worse in this world than what's known as poverty porn. It's the, you know, it's the sick and dying kid. It's the, you know, it's, we've all seen the commercials of the kid with the flies on them. We've seen, you know, any, but anytime you go, if you ever have the chance to go to a developing country, you will be, if you haven't been, you'll be shocked by the level of poverty. We have no concept of the level of poverty. And you'll start taking pictures of it because you're a photographer and you're documenting the world around you. And then at least for me, after the first day, all of a sudden I stopped and went, wait, I don't want to do just this. There, I, there's smiling faces, there's beautiful kids, the moms, the parents. I, I want to take pictures of that. So whenever possible, and you're trying to work with causes, and you're trying to be good, and you're trying to do more in the world, focus on the solutions rather than just the suffering. We can all show a picture of a homeless person on the street, but why not show a picture of that homeless person in the shelter, or getting a job, or getting education so they can no longer be homeless? You know, when I was you know, here's a beautiful, this is a picture of, this is the whole town getting together under a tree with all the elders so that the people from UNICEF and Gavi could explain to them the vaccinations, explain what was gonna happen. It was a beautiful moment. Now, just to the left is their, you know, is their, their houses and there's probably, you know, a, a kid peeing on a wall and just, cause it's what's around. But I'd rather focus on this. I'd rather show this moment happening with the whole town getting together and the elders and the parents being so excited. I want to show this where we went in and this is us giving the vaccines. And my favorite part about this whole thing, we are out in the middle of nowhere, Ghana. I mean, we are way out in the jungle right now. And I don't know if you can see it on the wall. Please switch off your phone. This is a classroom. And it cracked me up <laughs> because I thought, wait, no matter where you are in the world, I guess kids are still going to use their phones in classrooms and parent teachers are going to have to tell them to turn it off. But I want to show this picture. I want to show this, all these you know, the beautiful colors and the people and the motion and the kids you know, this little girl trying to figure out what Janine's doing and all the babies coming in being weighed and being checked up. I wanna show that. I wanna show the happy mom who is so excited that we were bringing in, you know, the vaccines we were bringing in was for pneumonia and rotavirus, diarrhea. We were making sure that kids weren't going to die from diarrhea. And the parents were super excited about this. I wanna show this picture rather than another kid suffering. And, and then of course you have to show the kids because the kids are just awesome. The kids are the best. They have the best smiles in the world. Um, but I want to show this rather than the sick and dying child that I started with. Um, and speaking of mercy, so this is what I want to talk about with mercy. The, what was great about mercy was I came home and I said, I got to do something for her. I had this dream that I was going to save her, that somehow I was going like, to send her to school. or so. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, sadly, she passed away two months afterwards. Um, one found out for me and I was like, oh, this sucks. What can I do? I mean, she was one kid. She's one girl. I met for 10 minutes, but she changed my life. I had to do something. So I connected with this company, Project B, that was started by a couple college girls 
where I went to school at Bentley University. I saw them on Twitter one day say something about beads in Ghana and it caught my attention. And they made this bracelet for her. Um, this is, a, if you're familiar with the One campaign, they're white bracelets. So this is made from recycled glass from Ghana. Um, we made this bracelet and all the proceeds go to education programs in Ghana. I couldn't save Mercy, but I'm gonna make damn sure the kids get money from it uh, in some way and they can do something of it. But this is what I mean. This is solutions rather than suffering. This is a, just a simple little thing. Um, and by the way, I will give a total plug for Project Bead. They do amazing work. They bring beads from uh, Ghana and they make these beautiful bracelets. Um, most of them are too feminine for me. They're not my style, but <laughs> they make great gifts. They're great, great stuff. I'll give them a big, big plug. And I'll leave you with this. Hugh McLeod is an uh, artist. He's a cartoonist. Great, great cartoonist uh, based in Miami these days. But I, this, he, he made this cartoon, and I always love it, that life is too short not to do something that matters. It really is. We don't know if tomorrow, if we've got it. We have no idea. I mean, I could walk off the stage and be hit by a bus. We have no idea. So please make sure, I, I just implore you, I plead to you, everybody watching out there, please do something with your life, something with your photography. We can all have our projects, our passions, and the stuff we have to do to make money, but at the same time, find a way to use your talents to give back in some way, even if it's, if it's a small, small thing, but find a way to give back to the world. It'll make, I promise you, it'll make everything you do better, it'll make your life more enriching, and everything else, those hard days, be a little bit easier when you're doing this. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of PICS.